We're gonna go into strength training for badminton and we're gonna start right now. Okay, so when I told somebody I was gonna be making a video on strength training for badminton, one of the first things that I got asked is really? Do you really need to strength train for badminton? Because people have this perception that badminton is a joke and it's not. It's one of the fastest games in the entire world. It is absurdly fast. So when we're thinking about badminton, and I've played a lot of badminton in my day, I actually have. When we're thinking about badminton, we have to look through various lenses of sports that are similar. Think about highlight, think about tennis, okay? These are sports that are also absurdly fast. So when we're looking at those other sports, we can start to see some specific similarities. With badminton and with the speed at which it occurs, there has to be a lot of focus on that speed, but there also has to be a lot of focus on what we're doing with our trunk. There has to be a lot of focus on what we're doing with our ankles, okay? This changes a lot of how we can react on the court. And so now we're gonna go into those four key areas that you can use to improve your strength training for badminton. That first key aspect is gonna be improving change of direction or agility. Change of direction, agility, okay? Let, let's look at it through that lump. What this in reality means is improving impulse. Okay, so what is impulse? Impulse is exhibiting a large amount of force in a very short period of time. So how much force can I generate from the ground in a short period of time? That might be 0.3 seconds, it might be a half second after you make a hit and you have a premeditated plan based off of that shot, where do you see that opponent placing their next shot based off of your previous shot and then putting yourself into that position? That is part of change of direction. That's part of agility, that is impulse. So when we're training for impulse-based work and we wanna have a positive impulse score, which nobody talks about in any regards, in any strength and conditioning, except for us, when we're talking about impulse score, that means we're having a positive reaction to training, we're enhancing enhancing our ability to improve force output in a short period of time. Blast impulse is gonna be under a half second. So if we can improve that blast impulse, which leads to a positive impulse score, that's gonna help us cut much better on the court. If we have good mobility, we can change our direction rapidly by changing our knee and shin angle. If we change our shin angle, we're gonna be able to decelerate or accelerate faster because of the way that we exhibit the impulse. Okay, so if we have that mobility in the ankle because of our agility-based training, because of our change of direction work, because of our mobility work, and if we can plant farther in front of us, now we're gonna be able to decelerate faster. If we can plant with our foot behind us by changing that shin angle now, we're gonna be able to accelerate faster or get into a jumping position quicker. So all of this stuff is part of badminton-based training. In badminton, we also need to train the second key aspect, which is gonna be dynamic trunk control. In the sport, okay, it's very similar to tennis. When someone is serving or when anyone's returning a shot, the opponent is actually making their correction or their situation, they're improving their positioning based off of the swing, based off of the downswing and before they even make contact. So badminton players are actually calculating based off of where the trunk position is and where that hand position is, where the racket is, the speed of the racket, what are they doing with the racket head. This is all part of the calculation from world-class badminton players that they're making to then adjust their body on the court to then make better shots. Okay, so part of that is dynamic trunk control. Okay, if I'm running full speed, if I'm a badminton player and I'm running full speed and I go to cut, but when I go to cut and make a shot here and I'm cutting to get back to the center, if I collapse my chest forward and I crumble forward, I can't cut to get out of that. If I'm holding a better position with my trunk, I can make better plays now with my hand because I'm more stable in my trunk. If I'm more stable in my trunk, not only can I make better shots, I can change my direction faster. So dynamic trunk control work, using a hydro weight, using banded jumps, using plyometric movements can help improve your overall impulse score, your overall ability to change direction side to side, okay? And that takes us into our next aspect, which is gonna be improving our overall explosive performance, okay? So if we can think about impulse as just producing a large amount of force cutting back and forth. Something like training our vertical jump, 
is still gonna have impulse in it, but we also have to be able to just be as explosive as possible with plyometric based training. Okay, so if we can improve our plyometric based training, that's gonna lead to better jumping ability on the court, which can in turn lead to better shots if we're jumping higher or if we're diving for the shuttlecock. If we can dive longer, now we can return this crazy shot that somebody might have made because we're more explosive. So we have to understand impulse work is gonna help us move side to side and cut on a dime. Plyometric work will help that, but it's also gonna help us jump a lot higher, which in turn is gonna help us hit better shots. If we have good dynamic trunk control, that is gonna help us be more stable and see the court a little bit easier because we're quieting all the noise from this extremely fast sport. And then that's gonna factor into that last key aspect, which is gonna be power endurance. And I believe in a sport like badminton, you have to be on point mentally. So you have to be training your mental acuity while you're under fatigue. Okay, so we need to be improving our technical execution while we're being fatigued. So I would even argue that you could do things like cyclical base training, like a assault bike for 10 minutes, or let's say you do a Tabata protocol on the assault bike, 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. And then afterwards, during your active rest period, you're just doing little pot shots, you know, little training shots back and forth. That's your active rest. And then you get back on the bike. When you're resting again, you go back and you do some more technical work. Where this goes is that that leads to improving your power endurance. So now you can be more explosive when you're fatigued Fatigued, but not only are you gonna be more explosive when you're fatigued, you're also gonna be making better shots because now when you're fatigued, you're training that aspect of your mind, which improves your mental acuity when you're under a lot of stress. That's the hardest part with racket sports is that there's a ton of stress. You're trying to predict what your opponent's doing. You're trying to improve and execute at a very high degree at a very high speed while you're tired. And so all of that has to be part of your strength training for badminton. We can't just throw things at the wall. It has to be planned and we have to test our athletes athletes. We have to test our players and see what happens when they're under a lot of stress. How high do they jump when they're fatigued? How quickly can they cut when they're fatigued? How well are they moving their shin angle when they're tired? How well are they making these specific shots? If we direct them on these specific shots in series and sequences, and that's another factor, I think that you should actually be training almost resistance-based work with technical work as contrast methods so that it can carry over even better out on the court when you're under a lot of stress. And then you create these sequences that enables you to be more precise with that fatigue. So use all of these key examples to improve your performance and your strength training for badminton. And if you need help, head over to peakstrength.app. We put together entire training programs based off of this philosophy, based off of this methodology, so that you can be a better badminton player. Until next time, guys, peace.